thank you to Teresita and Olga for not only putting this together, but for including me. Um, I very much appreciate being here in the presence of wonderful people, all you good people, um, academicians. I'm not an academician. I am a thinker. I think that academicians are the OCD of thinkers. <laughs> but I, I very much appreciate what you do because you force the rest of us to stretch our own thinking and to go beyond our, ourself into a, a, a place we need to go into. And um, I also want to thank directors, curators, fellow artists, artistas, Atiks, I don't know, Atiks, Atix, what do we, what do we call ourselves? <laughs> Thank you all for what you do. I'm going to read two poems. First one is entitled Autobiography of a New Yorican. Half blue, feet first. She battled into the world, hardly surviving the blood cord twice wrapped tense around her neck, hanging, womb, pressing, pushing, pulling life from mother's child, fragile flesh emerging, perfect in blueness, like the lifeline that sustained her yet limp almost a corpse. Her mother claims the virgin interceded, invoked through divine promise in prayer that caused her dark eyes to open, her tongue to taste air like fire as blueness faded, tracing death on the tail of an eclipse. And as in birth from her darkness, the free giving sun inch slow to visibility, revealing all color and form, a great teacher, generous and awesome, silent and reverent, loud and blasphemous, constant, sculpting edges of definition in the shadow and light of multiple universes. Half blue, feet first, she battled her way. The world did not want another brown, another slant-eyed olive Indian black child. Did not want another rainbow-empowered song added to repertoire in blue or indigo or azure or Caribbean crystal did not want another mouth to feed, especially another rock the boat poet, another voice open wide, fixed on a global spectrum of defiance. The meaning of war defined her, gasping and innocent, barely alive, before she knew her mother, before she discovered herself, gathering weapons into her being with each breath that filled her, growing stronger, determined to beat all the odds. Now this, this next poem was written with um, my teenage students in mind. And I'm a mom, I have um, four daughters, I have five grandchildren, and I just became a great grandma. Um, so, you know, I have been formed by them. As much as I have formed them, they have formed me. Um, and so, you know, I, I write with them always in mind. This is called, How They Get You. <laughs> it 
It begins on the day you were born, before that first breath when you arrived, the descendant of former slaves. Already you have been stolen from your land, your legacy, your heritage, and your name. Already there are things you will not be told, precious information about your past, your history. Already you will be kept in the dark. They will replace this knowledge of your true being and fill your mind with trivial things from oversized electronics by plastic teachers only concerned about their future pensions. They will make you fight in human wars against each other. You will be forced to eat bad food and fast food that are poison to your health and your true wealth that will be agriculturally manipulated, nutritionally depleted, and manufactured in laboratories. The water you drink will be contaminated and infiltrated with strange unnatural chemicals approved for consumption by greedy entrepreneurs who want to control your sacred spirit. They will convince you to buy a thousand useless items that you don't need but must have, and then a thousand more just because. The new model, the next version, the latest style, none of which will make you happy, whole, complete, or wise. Because there is never enough when there is too much, that means nothing in a material existence of little, little value, except to own you day by day, moment by moment. A slave to your job, they will own your next check before you get it. They will make you do things you never wanted and become who you didn't plan and go where no one should ever be and live in ways you never imagined until you have shut down to the song in your soul and become deaf to the dance of life living in a box like a tomb before your time. They will dangle glittering carrots before your eyes to entice you to razzle-dazzle you. They will get you caught up in so many clever schemes they invented and invested, marketed and infested with grotesque expectations, leaving you frazzled until you won't even know you've been got. Confronted and confused, they will hold you hostage, confined in a gilded cage until you are mentally enslaved, emotionally starved, and spiritually depraved. They will get you in a hundred million ways while you are unaware and asleep until you fall into your grave. Or until the day you decide that you are not going to get got, that a slave you are not, that you were born for a purpose, who you are meant to be, and you begin to read books, to learn and see and reach from deep within that hole they buried you in and push the rising of your heart, mind, and soul onto higher ground and greater treasure, the dream of the you within you are meant to discover, to uncover like no other, unique, choosing to hold on to the one you always wanted to be by yourself on your terms, wide awake with your wild and beautiful spirit free.